Good morning. Uh, we're in the uh, the horrible lighting spot. Take off my glasses. And it's uh, first thing in the morning. Got a uh, big cup of coffee, and we're gonna read some uh, comments off the video forgiveness. It's almost big enough to stick my head in. So the first uh, comment for uh, forgiveness is from uh, Golden Finch Fellow. What up, Golden? Um, he say my dog's a horrible beast. I always forgive him, though. Yeah, I think that uh, I was reading uh, the... I've been reading the Master Commander series. I've been reading it over and over again. And uh, there are times in there where somebody does something where uh, I'm like, how could you forgive that? And uh, like at one point in time... Uh, somebody on the ship was supposed to keep uh, uh, one of their prisoners on board um, and when one of the men went ashore to do some political work uh, that person the prisoner um, one of the sailors agreed to move the prisoner to land and let him go but it turned out that moving that prisoner to land might have actually killed one of his shipmates because when that guy got there he started spouting off all sorts of things and pretty much everybody, you know, knew that. I mean, like in a small ship, uh, if someone leaves it, pretty much everyone's going to know about it. Unless you fall overboard in the middle of the night. So if everybody knows it, and everyone knows that that could have killed one of their shipmates, and it was disobeying or orders, you know, how do you forgive that? And uh, and the way they do is they just do. Like they like I guess maybe they ask themselves like if you know. Is, it, is this ever going to happen again, or is this person aware of how terrible it was? And the guy was. He was aware of that what kind of mistake he made afterwards. I mean, he didn't know what the repercussions were going to be. He thought he was doing a nice thing. Um, so I suppose why we forgive our dogs and why we forgive our mutinous shipmates is, uh, I guess, because the, um, the overall benefit or the overall value of your friendship is, uh, is very important. And... Uh, and, you know, occasionally um, screwing up um, is going to be part of life. Yep. That's, that's what I think. Uh, the Krog. Dev. Hi, Dev. You say good stuff. Thanks, Dev. Um, Mr. Leruger says he misses uh, mountain biking. You saw my new mountain bike, didn't you, Mr. Leruger? Uh, Carmel uh, 1119 says people talk or preach in some cases about issues they themselves are struggling with not a judgment just an observation um, I think that uh, you're right um, but I also I think that also pe sometimes people do this yes exact same thing like I'm, I'm thinking out loud trying to get to uh, like an understanding of what I feel about things like right at the moment um, my idea being that uh, a year from now or two years from now or however long, um, I can kind of look back and, and I'd, I'd actually be able to listen to myself, reason out what I feel, um, and see the expression on my face and and whatnot and hear the tone of my voice. Uh, and the idea is, uh, you know, to know thyself. Um, the idea is that... Uh, um, yeah, that these are issues uh, that I struggle with. Even like, even the fun things I do, I'm struggling to do those. But the the, the flip side of uh, your comment, though, is I've known a lot of people that uh, that preach or go on about um, something that they're either unaware of is that is their own weakness. Or um, it's kind of like if someone like realizes that they have a problem stealing, and so they're constantly telling everybody that you know stealing's bad, um, mostly because if everyone steals, that their stealing's going to be more obvious, <laughs> something like that. You know, it's more like a protective thing. Um, like someone lies a lot, and so they're always going on about uh, everyone needs to tell the truth just so they can make sure that they like, you know, no one deceives them, you know, that kind of thing. 
sometimes I, I know when people talk about the problems of others or what other people need to do, um, you could immediately look to see their actions and see that uh, they're almost talking about their own actions. So yeah, it's about self-awareness or uh, striving to be self-aware. Thanks, Carmel. Borg Duck, someone without forgiveness seems to have thumbed down your video. Actually, uh, Borg Duck, um, there's that thing now, uh, there's a chart of thumbsing uh, that you can see now on your, uh, your demographics or whatever that's called. Um, and since I started getting some thumb down uh, guys, uh, my thumbs up have skyrocketed. Um, which, what if that was their purpose? What if the, like, the, the one or two or three thumbs down guys, um, were like, uh, not enough people are thumbsing up Earl's videos, and thus he's not showing up in that, that kind of main page thread. Um, and I could, so I could thumb him up three times, and then what's that going to do? Um, or I could start thumbing him down, and then people were like, what? You can't thumbs down an Earl video. He... He's so awesome. <laughs> yeah, reverse psychology. Well, whatever it is, it works. So, Borg Duck, uh, thanks for all your thumbs up. And uh, thumbs down, guys. That was an interesting thing. I wouldn't have thought that. I bought this cup one day uh, to make me happy. I was feeling a little sad. I figured, that, you know, it's not only the utility of it, but it's just fun to drink coffee out of. Oh, uh, oh, Borg Duck, you also made another comment saying, I'm not being judgmental because I've been conned enough times, but wasn't it a bit naive to give your bank details and go away on holiday? Well, this was like, uh, this was a long time ago, um, for one. Like, as now it would be so easy to have all that stuff done uh, automatically. Uh, I didn't even have an email address uh, back then. Um, this, was when I was, this was when I was young. Um, and, but that's the thing about trusting people. Um, you have to trust some people. Um, and sometimes you have to trust people with important things. Like every time, I think about it, every time someone drives me, uh, you know, for three hours on the freeway, I realize that, uh, you know, it's a major cause of death as being on the highway, and I'm, I'm trusting them with my life. Um, so, yeah, I, I, but I think that, you know, we got to trust each other. we got to love one another. Um, we have to be honest. Uh, we have to share. Um, have to do all these things, and if someone betrays any of those things, if someone lies to us or steals from us, um, or, uh, you know, misuses us, um, it's, that's not against us. That's not a bad thing for us. Um, that's a terrible thing for them. <coughs> I think I'd be, like, naive if, like, it, you know, if it surprised me. You know, like, uh, like, what, people do that? <laughs> Um, so like, you know, it, it was shocking, um, but it's not like I was unaware that sometimes people betray other people's trust. Um, so yeah, though I will tell you a story of, uh, na naivety, um, later if I don't talk too long in the comments, because I am naive about some things, um, but not about like trusting. I think that, uh, that's trusting people and loving people is part of what makes life so awesome and so I'm just going to keep doing it I just probably won't love and trust you know the same person that uh, that horribly betrays me um, so uh, yeah it'd be terrible to trust that person again and get shafted uh, twice like that they actually set me up for that I don't know if set me up is wrong maybe they're actually giving me an opportunity um, to see that they had changed uh, and I wasn't interested in seeing that uh, didn't didn't want to have that opportunity because it'd, it'd be that would be an opportunity to get made a complete fool out of, and so, and then maybe and uh, but also you know maybe they thought I was like you know an easy touch or something like that maybe they thought I hadn't figured it out because like when you realize what's going on and then you immediately make a decision it's not like a whole bunch of like terrible ramifications they're like well maybe it wasn't that big of a deal or maybe didn't even realize how bad that was you know sometimes actually people don't think that I know that they've insulted me because I have. Uh, you know, either no reaction or positive political reaction, kind of like that. Uh, um, you know, I make the best of it. Uh, someone insults me, and I just make the best of it. And they think, oh, I don't even think he thought I insulted him. Uh, but I do. 
Uh, I'm very aware of that kind of thing. But uh, I got my eye on the prize most of the time. Hmm. Laura Layla, Lala. Uh, and Lala, thanks for your forgiveness video. That was awesome. Um, for, oh, also let me say that you, you got you were in your in your car and you you have such a wonderful voice. Um, that that's almost what I love about your walk and talks when you got in your woods and you're talking and uh, you slip on stuff and you get out of breath and then like a wonderful tree or a little stream catches your eye and you lose your train of thought. It's almost like I kind of like the the balance of the two. I was I was really happy when you uh started walking around on your trails talking. Uh, but uh, Lala says, forgiveness is good for you, not because you've uh, let the person off, but because lack of it eats away at you. Pardon me. Uh, strangely, most of us seem to have the belief that not forgiving someone continues to punish them. But realistically, it only punishes the bearer and has no impact on the perpetrator. That said, it's easier said than done, and it feels somehow satisfying to send little barbs of hate at the other. Learning not to allow others to trust us badly can be learnt, though. Learning not to allow others to treat us badly can be learnt, though. Um, yeah, that's, that's that's the other good thing. Like maybe maybe that's what Board Doug meant. Um, like you try to try to and try to anticipate, like you know things that, you know, would be unacceptable. Uh, like, because maybe, uh, maybe I could have contacted those companies, um, contacted my bank, and worked out some sort of, like, they could mail checks a certain time, or I could mail predated checks that they would cash um, uh, on a regular basis, and then I would come and either, I'd either have a balance, or I'd, ha I'd, I'd owe them a little bit, I'd pay that when I came back, but they'd know I was on vacation, and they would probably help me work it out. So that would have been a way I could have uh, avoided that nightmare. And yeah, and salvage that uh, uh, relationship because that was a good relationship until that uh, uh, financial faux pas. It's a fantastic uh, comment, Laura, Le Laura Layla. Um, oh, Lapsus Redux uh, says the same thing. Imagine uh, giving someone control of your bank account. I'm afraid that's just foolishness. Any transaction could happen and the buck would stop with you. Um, yeah, it, uh, that's the thing, but I trusted that person completely. Um, so, uh, to me it would almost seem like any, maybe that's what I balanced all that out, which I could have talked to the bank, I could have talked to my, uh, the bill companies, um, but I think that would almost be a, uh, a sign that I thought that there was a potential for this person to betray my trust, and I'd, I'd known this person for a long, long time, and uh, uh, I, there was no nothing in my life experience that led me to believe that this person would do anything like that. So I think this person had something. Uh, I was away for four months, and I think uh, during that four months, something uh, uh, kind of life-shattering uh, happened, and uh, they did some things that... Uh, that what weren't in their character at all, because something that had happened uh, in their life that was uh, almost character destroying. Uh, glitch, hi Glitch, uh, says, uh, "Wow, that sucks. That happened to you uh, with that person. Sounds like the worst part was being let down when you found they were pretty much stole your money. I hate feeling let down like that by a person you think is your friend." Uh, Oh, that would, that would be worse than having lost the money. I could tell you still feel weird about it because your facial expressions. Um, yeah, I was thinking like uh, when, I, when um, Count Hector uh, asked me what I felt about forgiveness, I thought about when have I been pressed the hardest to forgive, and I think I've been pressed the hardest to forgive during that that time because, uh, like Laura Layla said, um, to hold on to it was way more painful. You know, I would have paid twice that to not feel that pain. So I guess maybe that was the most important thing. I mean, I, I could tell, intellectually, I could tell that it was unlikely I was ever going to get uh, um, paid back like I, uh, you know, like I should. So it was just an emotional thing, like that when something is 
so powerful that it affects your health. Um, you have to do whatever it takes to make it better, make it right. All right, so that's all the quotes, uh, I mean the comments. <laughs> so, uh. They're called comments. That's all the comments um, from forgiveness. So I'll tell you uh, the, uh, the naive story. Um, I was going to a place I go to all the time. I know these people uh, pretty well uh, in, a business, in a business way. But uh, I've been there enough, and, uh, um, and I, they often find me a really good listener there. Um, that I think that I, I'm just one step. I'm like their coworker. I think is how they treat me. Um, and so one of them was turning to the other and talking about how their uh, their boyfriend just got out of prison, um, stole their car, stole their money, you know, stole some other things, and uh, like had just called from California. And. Uh, I was like, oh my gosh, how could you tell your coworker that? Um, that seems like a really personal, private thing. And, um, and like, the whole idea that, like, your boyfriend came straight out of prison, went straight to your house, and robbed you, like your boyfriend. Um, you know, like that, you know, the story I told about uh, that, just that, that betrayal is, like, such a high level. Um, and so their coworker turned to them and said, Oh, well, let me tell you how I deal with my uh, boyfriend's uh, PO officer. Um, I think it's PO. Um, yeah, parole officer. Um, and I was, like, struck dumb by the fact that uh, one person would turn to the other person and say, God, my boyfriend right out of prison just did this. And that person would respond like, you know what, when my boyfriend gets out of prison, what I do is, uh, I was just like, it would, it, it was an aspect of life that uh, was absolutely unanticipated by me. I, I certainly didn't have a, uh, uh, I couldn't just chime right in and say, oh man, man, when my girlfriend got out of prison once, the very first thing I said, uh-uh, don't you take the keys to my car. <laughs> I can't even imagine. See, that's the thing. Like, I, just, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't anticipate that, uh, that kind of... Uh, I don't know, existence, far out. So yeah, a, a, a little bit of naivety for you. All right, fair enough. I'll see you in the tubes.